there's a big shakeup coming in the resale world, and this is huge. Welcome to Flippin' and Punchin', and today is Wednesday. We're gonna pull some orders, and we're gonna talk about this major shakeup. There's a couple things going on right now. You know, one has to do with Facebook Marketplace, the other one has to do with Macari. Uh, we're gonna pull a couple orders, show you guys what's actually selling. And we have a couple other issues. So one of my packages got broken and probably the, the ship in the last video maybe. I don't know, but UPS destroyed one of my packages. So I'll talk about that. And uh, we're gonna talk about how this shakeup and how it's gonna impact reselling going forward. It's a bold move on a couple of different companies. So back in the day, I was a huge Sim, well, still am a huge Simpsons fan, but back in the day, I was really big in the Simpsons, watched every single episode. And when they started coming out with their toy line in like the early 2000s, I ended up going and buying a ton of them. They used to be worth really good money. The market's kind of died down on them now, but what, what they used to do is they used to, they teamed up with Toy Wizard Magazine and they used to have these mail-in figures. And this is one of them here. This is Pin Pal Mr. Burns. I ended up loading up on a bunch of these back in the day. The reason for that, there's a radioactive one that was selling for like hundreds of dollars. So I figured, hey, the next ones, they did a boxing homer, they did a pin pal burns. Unfortunately, those didn't really hold as value as the other ones did. So I probably lost money on this. I mean, I had this for like 20 years. This was my personal collection, but um, I think maybe paid $19.99 plus shipping when I originally bought this, but I ended up putting it on eBay, just clearing some stuff out. Got $17 plus shipping for this. All right, next time that sold was probably one of my favorite pickups in the last over the last year here. I got bought this lunchbox at a garage sale. So it's definitely from I think it's post World War World War II, maybe. I don't know. It's definitely old. Uh, it looks like someone put a custom paint job on it, if I'm not mistaken, but great condition. And then the inside, I mean that inside pattern. Super cool. But I paid $15 at a garage sale for that. I thought that this thing was super unique. So I listed it up in my store for probably like 70, 80 bucks. And over time I dropped it. I had to drop to $69.99. A buyer actually came out and bought it. So I was really holding on to this one because I knew it I had to find the right buyer for it to sell. Even though I held on to it for a while, I was right on that one. So I got $69.99 plus shipping. My wife gets up before me because she has to go to work. She's an RM. And I woke up, I usually come down and make, make her breakfast before work. And I, <laughs> she's in the bathroom brushing her teeth, getting ready. And I walk in the bathroom and she just starts laughing. And I couldn't figure out why she's laughing. I was like, what is wrong? And she goes, look at your face. I looked in the mirror and look at this. Look at my forehead right here. I literally was wearing a hat yesterday at the baseball game. And I got sunburned from here down in my freaking top of my head. Yeah, so be careful wearing hats at baseball games because if you get sunburned, you're going to get a hat ring on you. So she thought it was the funniest thing in the entire world. Me, not so much. If you're wondering why I was wearing a different shirt in the last, uh, those last two clips there, I actually started filming this yesterday, stopped, and then I figured I'd just get everything done today on there. But All right, so let's talk about some of the really big news here and how it's going to impact reselling. Number one. Facebook Marketplace. Facebook Marketplace is doubling the amount of their fees. So that's not for in-person pickups. That's for if you order something online. And if you order something online and you have to ship it out, you know, Facebook will take the money and then they'll charge you, they're gonna raise their prices to 10%, which is what Macari was charging. Ironically, I got an email this morning stating that Macari is dropping selling fees in the US. That's correct. That is correct. They're dropping selling fees. That means they're going from 10% down to zero for, for resellers. And this is huge. If you guys know the backstory about Macari, Macari was founded, I think 2013, somewhere around that time. They are Japan's biggest community e-commerce website. And what I think they're doing, and I don't know this for a fact or what their business strategy is with this, but I think they're trying to take market share. I think that's what they're trying to do. The same concept that eBay used. When StockX went after eBay's market for shoes, they offered authentication process. Um, they really hurt eBay's business on shoes. So what eBay did was they counted it and they did zero selling fees if you sold shoes or, or in different categories because they're trying to take that market share. 
We're all similar to like Amazon back in the day. If you guys know Amazon backstory, if I'm not mistaken, I think their business model was for the first 10 years not to make a profit. They were trying to take market share. So this is a bold move by Macari. Zero selling fees for sellers. So it's going to be quite interesting to see what happens going forward. But let's pull a couple more orders and we'll do more of a deep dive here into that. And also, too, in the Facebook, raising the prices. All right, so another wrestling DVD. I keep telling you guys TNA wrestling DVDs. If you guys see them out and about, pick them up. We sold TNA Bound, of, Bound for Glory. This is from 2007. It features Sting on the cover, Kurt Angle. The reason why these are so popular right now, they actually changed their name from Impact Wrestling back to TNA. And I think a lot of people are just going back and buying all the old TNA DVDs. Not a lot of them don't sell for much. You know, some sell for you know between five and seven bucks. I got five ninety nine plus shipping for this one, but I only got a quarter into it. But if you're out and about and you find TNA DVDs, pick them up. They do sell pretty well. There's some in there that will sell ten, fifteen, twenty bucks a piece. So I pick these up anytime. If I get for a buck or less, I pick them up every single time. They're they've been selling great for me, as you guys can tell from my previous videos. All right, next time we sold we sold another box. This is a Chanel box. I will tell you, man, if you guys come across Chanel boxes, pick them up. They've been selling really good for us. There's a big stack of boxes still. Still adding boxes as we go. This one is 14, 14 by 11 by 6. I think it's that big one right there. We had a list. I think we had a list for $59.99. And we took, I think we sent our best offer maybe for $49.99 plus shipping. So. so Facebook decided to raise their fees. They're doubling their fees. I think they're going from like 5% to 10% which is kind of what Macari was already at at that point in time. And to be honest with you guys, I'm surprised Facebook didn't do it a long time ago because I mean, they were pretty much, they could have been the standard across the board. And this is my opinion that they really dropped the ball a long time ago because when Facebook Marketplace was going out, there had a lot of momentum, a lot of steam behind it. They were considered to be a legit threat to eBay. A lot of people thought because Facebook had so many users already that weren't on eBay, that would be a nice transition that, you know, you can do your social media, catch up with your family, show your pictures, and also be able to sell stuff in the same marketplace. Unfortunately, they dropped the ball tremendously with our marketplace. It's very difficult to navigate through. Uh, I know a lot of people get annoyed with it. A lot of you get a lot of scammers on there. I mean, you have scammers on every platform. But the crazy, you know, the biggest thing about Facebook, which had a huge advantage over a lot of other platforms, is because you're ge geographically located, you can actually pick up the items in person. So that was a huge thing. And then being able to sell items online was huge as well. But they just dropped the ball. And unfortunately, you know, they, they blew a golden opportunity to really take marketplace and market share away from you. I mean, if I was a betting person many, many years ago, I would have put, I would have doubled down. I thought Facebook was really going to change the reselling market. I don't know. We'll see what happens here going forward. Um, is the 5% going to hurt them at all? No. People that sell on Facebook are going to continue to sell on Facebook. Remember, that's not in-person transactions. That's only if you ship things online. All right. We sold two more Disney pins, which is great. I love, love seeing these things go, especially if my buy cost is like less than three bucks per pin. But let's pull these. All right. First one. First pin is this one right here. It's a leadership pin. All right, so this is a leadership pin. Came in that massive lot I picked up. I think I had it listed for $39.99. Someone sent me an offer for 25 bucks and I accepted. So I got $25 plus shipping for this pin. All right, next time we sold is another Disney pin, but the cool thing about this here is they actually have, it's a Disney cruise ship pin and they actually have pieces of the cruise ship actually inside the pin. Um, where's that here? All right, I had to put the camera down to find that one, but now look at this little bubble on the bottom here. See how that's raised up? And if I I shake that, you can actually see pieces moving inside the buzzle, the bubble right there. It actually says it's the mooring rope used as an anchor on the cruise ship in 1998. Thought it was a really cool feature that Disney did. They actually part, put part of the the rope that was used for the anchor for the ship. They chopped up in little pieces, put in a bubble, and it was limited to 2,500. So cool little feature for people to actually get a piece of the original um, cruise ship. And we had that listed for $29.99. We took an off best offer of 20 bucks plus shipping on it. All right, so we sold a couple books in another patch. All right, first one. First book we sold, I got this from 
massive graphic novel by. Right here, Astro City. Never heard of this one before, so I didn't think it was gonna be that good. Picked it up on a whim and I had it listed for $49.99. Someone sent me an offer for 35 bucks and I took it. Literally, I'm buying these for less than a dollar a book, so making an absolute killing on these. I'm doing really, really well. So. All right, next time we sold, this actually went out to our viewer, so I don't get a lot of viewer sales. All right, next time we sold is, a, is an actual patch. I know this went out to a viewer because they left a note and they did send me a message. So this is the Chicago Bears New England Patriots from 1986. Chicago Bears, if you don't know, have one of the best defenses of all time throughout the 1985 season. Pretty cool. Little Super Bowl patch there. Unfortunately, the glory days of Chicago Bears ended in the 80s. They have had a rough couple, actually a rough probably a couple decades to be honest with you. So they have really have been good since they had Jim McMahon and Walter Payton and the fridge. But that all may change this year when they, you know, they just got rid of, traded away Justin Fields and now they are going to draft a QB, probably with the number one pick, probably Caleb Williams from USC. So we'll see. They're making some moves this offseason though. All right, so I had this listed for $19.99. Buyer sent me a message to send them off for $17.99. They accepted. So I got $17.99 plus shipping, but they did leave me a note. Note said, thanks Rod, love your YouTube videos. We like the same stuff. Sounds like someone I like to hang out with. Florida is amazing for picking. We should move there soon. Don't move to Florida. Florida is horrible for picking, all right? <laughs> Now nah, go ahead. There's tons of, I mean, listen, there's enough food on the table for all of us to eat. I welcome anyone wants to come to Florida. But yeah, Florida is amazing for picking because all year round, there we pretty much have yard sales. Believe it or not, the summertime, like, summertimes are slow up here because it's so damn hot. So right now the spring is prime time for community sales and also in the fall prime time. So that's why you're gonna see a lot more community sales on my picking and punching channel. One of the biggest complaints I hear all the time from people that resell is eBay, fee bay. They call it fee bay because they raise their fees, fees are so high. I don't think eBay fees are high at all. I mean, if you opened up your own e-commerce website, the amount of money you would pay to market that to try to draw traffic there would be more than the 15% eBay charges you. So plus they have a built-in client base of 134 million users. 15% is a steal, to be honest with you. You know, if you go to like a local auction house, it's gonna pay 20%, 25% or higher. So I'm curious with you guys, with Macari dropping their rates from Z, from 10% to zero, are you guys going to start selling more Macari because there's lower fees? But now I can actually charge less money for the same item on Macari than I would on eBay because I'm going from a 15% fee on eBay to, to a 0% fee on Macari. Um, it's going to encourage me to cross this a lot more I could have more competitive prices on Macari, especially with the, the price change on there. Yeah, I don't know, it's quite interesting. And not to mention, there's gonna be no processing fees if you're a buyer and use your account balance. So they're encouraging people to not cash out their money on Macari and use it to actually buy stuff on there. But it's gonna be quite interesting going forward and see how that changes. And you know, with eBay raising their fees pretty much every six months or every year, I'm curious to see if eBay holds off from raising their fees going forward, you know? eBay has lost some market share over the past couple of years. You know, the amount of users have actually declined, but I mean, we still get great sales. eBay is still the 800 pound grill in the room, but yeah, it's gonna be interesting, you know? So put down the comments down below, let me know your thoughts on it. You know, are you gonna start, if you don't sell on Macari, you're gonna start trying to sell on Macari now? Are you going to sell, you know, Crossly and, uh, yeah, it's gonna be interesting. Wait to see what, what happens going things. forward. Future Rod here, a couple things I left out on this video. Macari is removing selling fees, but there is a fee of $2 to transfer your money to your bank account or $3 for instant payouts. That's number one. They are also charging a buyer premium when you buy. So a buyer has to pay 2.9% plus a 30 cent transaction fee. So just think of it as a buyer premium, which is really common practice with auction houses. If you ever buy anything from an auction house, the buyer premium will range anywhere from 10 to 20%. So here's a good example. If you're at an auction house and you buy an item for hundred bucks and they have a 10% buyer premium, you're actually paying $110 for that item plus shipping and tax because that extra buyer premium goes to the actual auction house or the one facilitating the actual transaction. The last change has to really go on the buyer side. Buyers have an option to return an item up to three days for any reason. That one really shouldn't matter because on eBay, a buyer can just open up a reason to return an item for any reason. If you guys are taking good photos, describing your items, that shouldn't be an issue. All right, back in November, the Commonwealth Picker and uh, Death Pile Picker came to Florida, then went picking with Dave, and then came across the state to come stay with me. 
and we went picking. And on a Sunday, we went out and we found a bunch of stuff. We did, I did find this massive lot of Walking Dead books. Some of those are brand new. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I think there's nine books there total. Had it listed on eBay for $139.99. Got a lot of watchers on it. Sent out some best offers. Someone sent me a best offer for 90 bucks, which is too low. So I countered them and we actually ended up selling at 100 bucks. So not gonna make big money off it because I did pay 50 bucks for the entire lot, but I did get some other items with that purchase. So minus my fees, I'll still walk away with like 35 bucks on that 30 bucks. But the biggest thing is look how much room this is taking up. Right now, that's a lot, that's a lot of space. And the big thing for me right now is I just got like, probably a total of like 10 short boxes filled with graphic novels and magazines. So getting rid of this is gonna free up a lot of space on my bookshelf there that I can actually put other stuff in. So I'm, I'm happy to see it go. So we got $100 plus shipping on those. Good thing I double count those books. I only pulled out nine. I looked at the picture, there's actually 11 books there. What I made for a horrible experience for the buyer, but I was shipped off nine, not 11. So I'm really good, I double checked that there. All right, next time we sold, we actually sold another slot car. I will say the slot cars are the gift that keeps on giving for me. A green little slot car. This is an older one, cool little piece. I had it listed on eBay for $79.99, sent out a best offer $69.99 and the buyer accepted. So I'm happy to get these, get these gone and out of here. All right, so let's talk about this UPS incident. In my last, it was my last video. I no, maybe it was two videos ago. I sold a Scooby Doo vinyl movie poster, and unfortunately, I'll put a picture up here what it looked like. All right, the poster UPS somehow smashed the box in half, bent it like bent it like a V. Yeah, not good. So the buyer's super cool and understanding, he knows it wasn't me. And not only did they break the box, they actually tried to tape up the middle of it, so it looks like crap. But, I mean, so the good thing about UPS, uh, FedEx, and Ground Advantage, or Priority Mail, anytime you ship an item, even if you don't put insurance on it, if it's, you get insurance up to 100 bucks. So I do got, you know, I got multiple photos of it. The box has been broken in half. I did, I did submit a claim this morning, so I'll have to stay tuned and see what happens to that. But, yeah, horrible situation. You know, this is the one I was negotiating back and forth with the buyer. Buyer was really excited. So there's a little piece of wood that goes across the top of the, the vinyl. And that keeps it steady so that you can actually hang it up on a wall. That part broke in half. And then because it broke in half, it actually punctured the actual top of the vinyl. So I think it still can be used. It just sucks that, you know, people that are collectors that want it, you know, people that are collectors want their stuff to be in good condition. And unfortunately, it came broken with a, with a rip in it. Unfortunately, UPS decided to just Hulk smash my box. All right, next time we sold is actually an Xbox 360 game. This came from this massive pickup I just did. The video had, wasn't out yet, but it should be out probably, I think next week on the uh, Picking and Punching channel. Ride to Hell Retribution right here. Pick this up. Um, I got maybe a buck and a quarter into it, somewhere in that ballpark, buck 50 into it. And that sold for $19.99 plus shipping. All right, next time we sold is a Sega Dreamcast. Funny thing is, this thing has been in my store forever, and I end up picking up an empty box, the Dreamcast. So I was like, oh, you know what? I'm gonna pair, brought it to my house, gonna pair the box with the system, and then re take it down and relist it. <laughs> in the meantime, someone bought it, so go figure. But I had it listed for I think one one nineteen ninety nine plus shipping. Someone sent me an offer for hundred bucks, and I accepted. So there's the Dreamcast, and then what I normally do is I like to <laughs> always get like original controllers if you can, but. If you have any extra controllers, even with third party, it always adds extra value. So I always like to add those in there. Buyer should be happy getting two controllers. If you guys don't know about the Sega Dreamcast, when it originally was released, it was pretty much a big failure, but it is actually a great system and it has developed a big cult following over time. So if you guys do come across Sega Dreamcast games, look them up, because majority of the time, they're gonna bring good value and they're hard to come by. All right, so when I was out in the garage picking through some stuff, I actually came across a couple of vintage Disney items. So I'm actually gonna do a vintage Disney whatnot tonight, which is, which would be Wednesday, because that's what day I'm filming. The time you guys see this, Rod in the past, well, I've already been done with this. But anyway, let me show you. These are just super cool, I wanna show you anyway. So these are vintage pieces, brand new in the box, still in the package. You know, they were what, $1.29 back in the day? It's gotta be 80s or maybe early 90s. A little vanity set, a little Mickey Mouse purse set, made in Hong Kong, so yeah. Definitely order pieces. Gonna include that, and then also, I got this to list up to. A Jasmine lamp, which I thought was super cool. And I wanna apologize to 
anyone that came out to my whatnot, my Disney whatnot stream on Monday. Yeah, so apparently, I sometimes I schedule my whatnots in like a month in advance date. I was out of town with my family at a baseball game and I scheduled, it was supposed to be scheduled for Wednesday and I accidentally scheduled it for Monday. I didn't notice it. And by the time I realized it, my, the, I couldn't adjust the time of the stream. The stream was already over. So if you showed up on Monday for my whatnot stream, I do apologize. It was just a mistake on my part. So sorry about that. But this one's gonna go through. I'm gonna be there for this one. <laughs> so, but I, I'm gonna wrap this video up here. I normally don't release a video on Thursday, but with all the news on Macari and Facebook Marketplace, I figured I had to come out with a video right away because it's exciting news for a lot of resellers out there and you gotta find out what it means to you and look at the different options you have. You know, One of the biggest things with this channel is I created this channel to help you guys out, also to show you guys what was sold. Because when I first started, there was no help. I had to learn all this stuff along the way. I started selling on eBay back in 1999. And it makes it very difficult not knowing, learning the hard way with things. So I show you, I'm very transparent on this channel. I show you my mistakes. I show you the good, the bad, the ugly. But along the way, I hope you guys do learn something. If you do, do me a huge favor. Make sure you do like and subscribe. I'm really like to try to build this channel up. So, and also too, give me some good feedback in the, in the comments down below. What do you guys want to see videos of? How to videos, help videos. Give me some questions. Give me some topics to discuss. I'm here to help. This channel is made to help you guys out. So, so until next time guys, make sure you guys keep flipping and punching.